welcome to the 9.1 Measures of Center and Spread video. In this video, the two major vocabulary words that you need to remember from when you learned them in probably intermediate school is mean and median. So those are the two ways that you can measure um, the measure of the center of data. So the first way with mean, that's the average. So I don't know if you remember the saying is my mean teacher makes me add them up and divide. So that means that you add up all the numbers that are in the set and you divide by the number of um, data values you have. So found by adding all the data values and dividing by the number of values. So then the median is like the median in the middle of a highway. It's the middle of the value of data sets. So as you arrange them from least to greatest, you find the one in the middle. If there are two in the middle, then you have to take the average of the two in the middle and that is your median. All right, so to measure the spread, you have two different ways to do it, depending on the type of data you have. So you have range, and then you have interquartile ranges. So range is the lowest value um, compared to the highest value, and you find that just by subtracting the highest number in the data set subtracted by the, the lowest number. So you have to make sure that the data is um, in order from least to greatest. So if you look at the example down below, we have 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9. So that is in order from least to greatest. So then to find the range, you would just take the highest number, which is 9, and subtract it from the lowest number, which is 1. So 9 minus 1 would be 8 if you were asked for the range in this problem. To find the IQR, we say that as short instead of interquartile range, you have to do a few steps to get to the answer. So the first thing is, you have to identify the median. So you line them up from least to greatest, you find the one in the middle. Remember, if there are two in the middle, you have to take the average of those two. Then you're going to take out that median. So now that you've found the median, you have to find the median of the left-hand side. So if you notice, in this example, one, two, two, three, three, four, four is in a box, not including the five. And the right-hand side, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, and nine, are also in a box, not including that five as the median. So what you're going to do is you're actually finding the median of quartile one. So quartile one is the one on the left. Quartile two is the one in the middle. And quartile three is the one on the right, the box on the right. So you have to find the one in the middle on the left-hand side. The one in the middle on the left-hand side is a three. The one in the middle on the right-hand side is a seven. So then to find the IQR, you just subtract quartile three from quartile one. So that's seven minus three, and you get the IQR is four. So what that means is you have a center amount of data, inner quartile range, and you just found the range that goes from the lowest to the highest based on that IQR. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like later on when we make box and whisker plots. So standard deviation is another way to find the center of a data set. So you have the average of the difference between the individual data values and the mean. So we're actually going to show you how to um, find standard deviation the, uh, you know, by hand, and then I'm also gonna show you how you can do it on your calculator. So on a calculator, however, it's a graphing calculator that you can do standard deviation. So that's why, because you guys are in Algebra 1, you can only use your regular um, TI-30XA calculators. It doesn't have standard deviation on that. So if you're ever asked to find standard deviation, you need to know the formula. So this formula looks a little confusing. It's not. All you do is X1 just means the first number in your set, X2 is the second number, and so on. The X with the line over the top of it, that just means the mean of your entire set of data. So you have to first find the mean, so you add up all of the numbers, and then you divide by how many there are, and then all you're doing is taking each data point and subtracting the mean from it. So you're setting each one up like that, and then you're going to take once you find that answer, you square it, and then you add it to the next one. So then you put in the second number in the problem, or in the data set, subtract the mean, square it, get that answer, then add the next one in. And you're gonna do that for every single value in the data set, and then after you get that answer, you're going to divide by the number of data values. So that's that N on the bottom, 
So you add all those answers up in the top, then divide by the number of values you have. And after you get that answer, you take the square root. And after all of that is done, you get the standard deviation. And standard deviation, what that means is um, the difference between the individ individual data values and your mean. So a lot of times when you take the average of something, your average can be skewed, which means that it can look like something that it's not because you might have outliers in there or because you might have repeating numbers. So we like to find standard deviation because that tells us on average how far away each data point is away from the mean, and that can tell us how accurate our data is. All right, so for this section, they want you to find the mean, median, range, IQR, and standard deviation for that set of information of data, which is 21, 31, 26, 24, 28, 26. So before we can find the mean or anything else, we have to list it in order from least to greatest. So on to the right, I just listed it in order from least to greatest. What's really important is to make sure you've included all of your data points. So I like to go through after I put it in order and just check to make sure I have everything. Because sometimes when you have a lot of numbers, you can miss one. So we have 21, so I cross out 21. 24, I'm going to cross out 24. 26, 26. 28, and 31. So we have six numbers in the question. I have six numbers after I reordered it, so I know that I'm right. So now for the mean, we just have to list them all and add them together, then divide by the number of numbers we have, which is six. So when you add them together, you get 156 on top, divided by six on the bottom, which equals 26. For your median, again, you're gonna list it in order from least to greatest, and you're gonna find the one that's in the middle. So I like to actually do with the cross out method, or you can actually use both hands at the same time and just kind of go left hand on the left hand number, right hand on the right hand number, and go one in at a time until you get to the middle. So if we cross one on the left, then on the right, then on the left, then on the right, we only have two left in the middle. And remember, if there are two in the middle, you have to find the average of those two. So we add them together and divide by two. 26 plus 26 is 52. 52 divided by 2 is 26. Okay, to find the range, you have to subtract the uh, smallest number from the biggest number. And remember, your range should not be negative. So if it is a negative answer, you have subtracted wrong. So make sure you look at the biggest number, which is 31, and the smallest number, which is 21, and we're going to subtract them so we get a positive number, which is 31 minus 21 equals 10. For your IQR, set it up again with least to greatest, and you're going to get rid of the median and find your quartile one, quartile three. So we're gonna find the median of the quartile one, which is the number in the middle, which is 24. And we're gonna find the median for quartile three, which is the number in the middle as well, which is 28. To find the IQR, you just take quartile three and subtract it uh, quartile one, which is quartile three is 28. 28 minus quartile one's median was 24. 28 minus 24 is four. Then for the standard deviation, we know our X values, so we just plug those in. 21, 24, 26, 26, 28, and 31. And then we also know the median, or the mean, which was 26 from the first answer we got. So we're just gonna subtract 26 from each of those. So you're gonna go through each one and subtract them. 21 minus 26, negative five, negative two, zero, zero, two, and five. So now in the right-hand column, you're going to square those answers. So that's negative five squared, which is 25, negative two squared, which is four, zero squared, which is zero for both of those, two squared is four, and five squared is 25. So now the last part of finding the standard deviation is adding up all of those values. So 25 plus four plus zero plus zero plus four plus 25, and that would equal 58. Then you are going to divide by the number of numbers you have. So 58 divided by six, which is approximately 9.67. And the last step is to take the square root of that, that number. So the square root of 9.67 is 3.11. And if you notice that weird looking symbol down there, that's the standard deviation symbol, 
which is just like a circle or an O with a little hat on. So you just kind of make an O and then you just make a little winky like eyelash off the top of it to the right. So it has to go to the right to be able to be that symbol. So the standard deviation for this set of data would be 3.11. All right, so for this part, we've got a data set of three, seven, four, six, and five. First thing we have to do is put it in order from least to greatest. So three, four, five, six, seven, just like you're counting. Then you have to find the mean. So you're gonna add up every single, well, make sure actually that we have all the right numbers. So I cross out three, then I cross out four, then I cross out five, six, and seven. We have all of them included, so we know we're good to go. So now we're going to add all those numbers together and divide by how many there are. And there's one, two, three, four, five. So we divide by five. So when you add everything up together, on the top it's gonna to be 25, on the bottom stays five. And 25 divided by five is, you got it, five. So now for the median, you're going to put it in order from least to greatest. And you're gonna cross out one at a time. So left, right, left, right, you're left with one in the middle, and so we don't have to do any extra math, so the median is five, ladies and gentlemen. And the range, so the range, remember, is the highest number minus the lowest number, so that would be seven minus three, and that would equal four. Your IQR, again, list it from least to greatest. Identify the median. We're not including the median, so I just like to cross it out. Find the median of the left-hand side, quartile 2, and the right-hand side, quartile 3, quartile 1 and quartile 3, I mean. And so you, because there's two numbers, there's no number in between, we have to find the average. So that's 3 plus 4 divided by 2. On the right-hand side, again, find the average, 6 plus 7 divided by 2. If there was just one number in the middle on the left and the right, we wouldn't have to do this. But because there's two numbers on the left and the right, we have to add and divide by 2 because there is no actual number in the middle on the left or on the right. So three plus four is seven, seven divided by two is 3.5. So that's our quartile one median. And six plus seven divided by two is 13 divided by two, which is 6.5, and that's our quartile three median. So you take quartile three and minus quartile one. So that's 6.5 minus 3.5, which is three. So the IQR is three. Then for the standard deviation, you're going to list all your x's, and then you're going to list them again, and you're going to subtract them from the mean. Remember, we know what the mean is because we already found that for the first problem at the top. That would be 5. So we're going to do minus 5 on all of them, and then you just go through and subtract. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 4 minus 5 would be negative 1. 5 minus 5 is 0, 6 minus 5 is 1, 7 minus 5 is 2. Then you're going to square all those orange answers. So negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So after you have those answers, we're at the very end, which is just adding all of them up. So 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 0 is still 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10. And we have five numbers, so we're going to divide by 5 which equals two. And the last step is just to stay, take the square root of two. So the square root of two is approximately, or is actually exactly, 1.4142. If you wanted to stop at the nearest um, hundredths place, then we would keep it at 1.41. So remember our standard deviation symbol is that little circle with a eyelash or a little hat or something. Just make sure it doesn't go on the left-hand side, only to the right. So 1.4142 is the standard deviation of this set of numbers. Go Seahawks!